In today's society, everything is black and white. Everyone must choose a side. You have to be for this political party or that political party. Or you have to identify as belonging to one culture or another. There is no gray area. But what if we could compromise? What if we could take the best of both sides rather than having to choose? I was born and raised in Florence, South Carolina. My parents immigrated here from Taiwan, so I speak both Mandarin Chinese and English at home. In America, I'm always seen as Asian. My neighbor's children often tauntingly yell the stereotypical Chinese greeting, ni hao, across their fence to me in the backyard. But when I visit my grandparents in Taiwan, I stick out as an American. Their neighbor once told me that I have an aura of foreignness about me. So who am I? Am I Asian or am I American? Is it East meets West or East clashes with West in my life? For many second generation immigrants, creating a new cultural paradigm is their change agent. In my everyday life, I experience what I consider the best of both worlds. I take the best of both cultures around me and use it to create my own personalized culture. For example, the Asian education system emphasizes discipline and rote memorization, whereas the American education system emphasizes creativity and discussion-based learning. Both education systems have their strengths and weaknesses. So how do you think outside of the box without losing sight of discipline? I used to compete in spelling bees. Rote memorization and drills are inevitable in preparation for these competitions. So my mother and I often included some imagination learned from the American school system. We would create fun mnemonic devices and short stories for the vocabulary words to make studying enjoyable. For example, I often confuse the spellings of the two words, confetti and graffiti. How many F's and T's are in the spellings of these two words? Well, did you know that confetti has two T's in it because throwing confetti produces a lot of trash, whereas graffiti has two F's in it because people like to graffiti F words onto walls? <laughs> I never confused these two words again. See, as a child, I would have soon given up on these competitions because of the lengthy preparation if I had not utilized the creative and flexible studying strategies acquired from the American education system. However, without the work ethic instilled in me from an Asian household, I never would have learned the discipline necessary in preparing for these competitions. And without the combination of both of these cultures together, I never would have had the opportunity to participate twice in the National Spelling Bee. All throughout my life, I was able to create a fusion of both American and Asian cultures, like my spelling bee experience. But there was still one aspect of my life that I sometimes felt a culture gap. School. Another major difference between Eastern and Western cultures on education is that in the Asian culture, there's no such thing as an overachiever. But in the American culture, overachievers are often seen as teacher's pets, or as teenagers call it nowadays, she's so extra. In middle school, I didn't want to be seen as a teacher's pet. But with my Asian upbringing, I still tried my hardest at everything I attempted, no matter how extra everybody thought I was. After all, my mother always told me that it's impossible to spell the word extraordinary without the word extra. So in seventh grade, my teacher called me aside after seeing my interim report card. I shuffled up to the front of the room, terrified I was in trouble. But my teacher simply pointed at my grade and asked me, how is this possible? I looked down at my report card, and this is what I saw. A 124 average. Trying my best, like I had been brought up to do, I had completed all of the extra credit assignments the teacher offered, allowing me to receive this grade as my average. However, because the highest grade a teacher is allowed to enter into the gradebook is a 100, 
my final grade for that subject read 100 on my final report card, meaning I forfeited the extra 24 points. Even though I had received all of the additional benefits the extra credit assignments provided, it was still discouraging to see my additional efforts wiped away at the end of the semester. It was only until last year when I advanced to the USA final round of the International German Olympiad that I finally realized the culture gap I was experiencing was only in my imagination. During the two-day competition in Chicago, I had to read, write, speak, listen, and perform a skit, all in German. And the first place winner of the competition would receive an all-expense paid trip to Germany to compete in the international round. I was already incredibly nervous. And to add insult to injury, my big brother informed me right before the plane ride, hey, did you notice how most of the competitors have German last names? It's safe to say I did not give him a goodbye hug. Anyway, here I am at this national competition receiving a bronze medal. Look how proud I was with my medal. Even though I didn't win the free trip to Germany, I did better than I expected against competitors with a German background, and I was content with placing third. When I texted my parents of the good news, they congratulated me. But on the car ride home from the airport, while I was happily chatting away about the competition, my father asked me what the difference was between the person who had placed first and me. I thought about the question carefully, and answered, the boy who placed first took more of an initiative when it came to German. While talking to him throughout the competition, I learned that he watched television shows and movies in German rather than only relying on the materials covered in class. And my father looked back at me and asked, well, why can't you do that too? At this point, the stereotypical Asian parents from Hollywood movies popped into my head. Here I am, still resting on my laurels, and my tiger parents are asking me why I can't be more like the winner of the competition. <sighs> Irritated, I asked back, well, why can't we be more like American families and, you know, celebrate my big win by going somewhere fun, like Disney World? And my father simply answered, well, Disney World wants you to reach for the stars too, right? Huh. After hearing my father make this comparison between Eastern and Western cultures, I was stunned. I had never seen this particular relationship between the two cultures before. So I started studying more. And I didn't only rely on my teacher to improve my German. A few months later, I took part in another German language competition. And following the competition, this is how I spent my summer. I had received an all-expense paid study trip to Germany for an entire month. Here I am in front of the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. I've been talking about some of the differences between Asian and American cultures. However, after my father compared what I considered his strict Asian values, to one of Disney World's most famous slogans, reach for the stars, I finally realized that even though parenting styles may vary from culture to culture, the basic values these cultures teach are essentially the same. All parents want the best for their children, and all education systems teach their students to be successful. The difference is in the method of approach each culture uses and the emphasis they place on certain aspects of life. That's why I'm standing here and speaking on this stage today. Cultures are not restricting factors. Just because you're from America doesn't mean you're restricted to the American culture. Broaden your horizons and experience new customs and new ways of life through reading a book from another culture, watching a movie from another culture, or even making a friend from another culture. Don't be afraid to think outside of the box and form your own culture. After all, cultures are collective human experiences. We can learn so much from each other if we're willing to change our attitude toward one another. 
The change agent to the fusion of cultures is within each and every one of us, as long as we're willing and courageous enough to take that first step and create our own cultures. As technology brings the world together, we human beings no longer live in isolation anymore. I'm able to sit on my couch eating a good old American cheeseburger at the same time as I'm texting my cousins in Taiwan across the world. So when cultures merge, let's learn from everyone's experiences and make the best of both worlds rather than allowing them to clash. Thank you.